What's up, people? This is the People's Podcast. I am your host, Young Michi, a.k.a. Schoonie Mac, a.k.a. Young Twiggy. And then my co-host is... Twiggy. Young Twiggy, <laughs> yeah. Back in the day, they used to call me Young Twiggy. You see, you got the one little twig right here. Come on now. All right. Anyways, those to be sleeping in these, the one and only John Wiley. Yes, sir. And we about to get into a lot of things that happened in the wrestling world. The whole wrestling landscape has changed. Last week, we talked about that a little bit. We're going to get even more into that because guess what? CM Punk is back. CM Punk is back. We just was talking about was he going to make his return to AEW? But let's just give a quick, a quick little um, rundown of what we're going to go through this week. We're going to talk about SummerSlam, stuff that stood out to us the most. We, of course, we're going to do Defend This Wrestler. We got John with a new segment where he's highlighting wrestling uh, throughout the entire world. And then, of course, we're going to end with the topic, who's the better team? Who had the better career, Edge and Christian or The Shield? But let us start off with the trending topics CM Punk is back. Let me know your thoughts. What you what's your thoughts about CM Punk being back in AEW now? Well, AEW has a certified, you know, superstar that people want to see, other than Chris Jericho and um uh Cody Rhodes and them and stuff like that. So, you know, they gotta they're getting their rosters getting more built. You adding a guy like that's a great idea. And then on top of that, um I want to know what capacity they're they're hiring for. Because if he's an idea guy, I think this would be perfect. But if he's out there wrestling, I'm very curious of how he's going to perform. Because for all we know, he, he might not have missed a step. Or if not, he might come back looking kind of sloppy. But I doubt that. He'll let that happen. And um, I'm happy for him. Do I want to go see him wrestle? Personally, not really. But I want to see him talk. Hopefully, they put him on uh, commentary. Because I remember every time they let him do commentary in Smack on Raw, it was fire mm-hmm. so who knows man but then again though their commentary team is pretty stacked as it is with jim ross excalibur the goat and mark henry if i'm not mistaken the goat jim ross now th- i gotta i gotta say this just to give you <laughs> just to give you a quick little uh what's to come i already know there's a lot of cm punk fans and they're not gonna like what you just said about that commentary because they believe in cm punk not only on the mic but they believe he's the best in the world like he says he is the best in the world like he said he is back in the day um and they believe that inside the ring as well so they like they're gonna be like commentary nah we want to see cm punk wrestle and the funny thing is though i did watch aew yesterday and that's probably like my first time really watching the episode and that look that's what cm punk does him returning made me actually turn on AEW and be like, let me see what they're going, what they're doing right now. Um, So I know that CM Punk is supposed to wrestle at their upcoming pay-per-view and he's wrestling Darby Allen. Now, I don't know too much about Darby Allen, but I know that he's one of their, you know, AEW stars. Um, So that's supposed to be a big match that's about to come up and that's going to be CM Punk's first match returning. The way I feel about Darby Allen is like, Man, it's it's like you know how uh, his wrestling style is kind of like uh, the ragdoll style. He'll just do stuff that'd be like, man, you're gonna hurt yourself doing this kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. that's just how he is. You know, I'm feeling like every time I watch him, he's like the guy that like he doesn't end up on Bachamania because it's all intentional. And on top of that, he's like he has like you know defense and endurance through the roof. If we're giving him stats mm-hmm. and. Honestly, he has a unique wrestling style, man. I think he might like it when you see him come out there and do what he has to do. I seen him wrestle on uh, this past AEW show, and um, I seen his finisher. Like he kind of just jumps in the air and just falls on him. That's his. Uh, that's his finisher. Um, and he doesn't do any flips. He jumps in the air and then he just lands <laughs> on him like, like that. Like I said, ragdolls on him. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like I say, it, it, to me, I'd be like that. It's, it's like I get your style. I'm like, is this what people like, man? I guess, I guess AEW is a little too weird for me. But then again, I'll keep it rolling though, because AEW does got some cool superstars like Luchasaurus. The thing you is, no, I haven't seen Luchasaurus. I have not. Yeah. Dude's cool. He's cool. I really? gotta check him out. Yeah. The thing is though about Darby Allen, he kind of reminds me of like 
like back in the day he probably would have wrestled with ecw like the original ecw kind of oh, yeah he kind of comes across like that to me and then another thing that stood out to me from watching AEW, darby allen is teaming up with sting right now and i'm like yeah. AEW is doing some stuff right now they got sting out there um seeing puck cut a promo and he was teasing that daniel bryan could be on the way because the fans were chanting yes 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 they was chanting they was doing that daniel bryan chant uh while cm punk was cutting the promo and then Dan, and then cm punk looked like he kind of gave us some insight he was like he's like that's not really my thing but he's like the guy that made that up just be a little bit more patient he could be on his way basically so he kind of gave us like some insight daniel bryan could be going to the AEW now so mm. Uh, I, I don't know I just the way I'm kind of seeing it right now it's like WWE has to start doing something of course WWE is still you know they're still at the top they they come on now the business they have built the business for so long but I'm like give it a few more years if the WWE keeps going downhill with their writing and the most important thing about their writing is they're losing superstars because of their writing and if they keep going to AEW and AEW is also establishing their own superstars, I don't know. I don't know. This may switch the landscape up. What's your thoughts on that? Honestly, man, yeah. And I've been hearing a lot of stories about the right team getting their feelings hurt and they personally not giving guys the best they can do, especially if I'm listening to Stone Cold's podcast and listening to um, Edge and Christian talk about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. It seems like those writers aren't consistent, but at the end of the day, Vince is the one that's green lighting everything, but it's just like, I wonder how much does Vince care about X and Y things, but we've seen SmackDown and Raw through the years. We know what they'll green light, so it can be anything and anything. So. And then another thing, I'm like, this is another thing I just gotta say that stood out to me, like, and that I appreciate about AEW. I seen Arn Anderson. Like I'm seeing that they're taking care of the legends. Arn Anderson took a kick by Aleister Black. Now I don't know what they call, I forgot what they call Aleister Black on um, AEW, but basically it's Aleister Black. Uh, that's his WWE name at least. And he he like he he pretty much served up a couple kicks to Arn Anderson. And I'm like Arn Anderson is a Hall of Famer. That's a legend, but they're still allowing him to get in the ring. And I'm like. I, I like what they're doing it seems like because wwe as time went on it seemed like they kind of went away from the legends besides goldberg besides like the rock mm -hmm. triple h besides like a few that was you know stars back in their day um a few of like the other legends they kind of like moved past like i always thought to myself like why didn't why did they let jr go or why didn't they ever bring jr back full time because jr will come back like periodically like to do one wrestlemania match or something like that and i was like and then come to find out like jr actually seemed like listening to his interviews and uh listening to his book he sounded like he would have been open to still commentate for the wwe full time for the most part i'm like what is i don't know it just seems like wwe at times they kind of get a go away from their their like legends and AEW look like they're more so embracing it but they're not like making them like championship contenders but they're like keeping them around the young guys and everything so i don't know i just like what AEW's kind of doing right now it's, i ain't gonna lie i like what they're doing they, they starting to kind of they they putting something together they putting up su something at least uh man we'll see we'll see like i said i'm trying to get diversify everything and just watch all wrestling Right now, I'm trying to wrap up Lucha Underground so I can talk a little bit more about AEW in the future because uh, some of those guys you did get over there, so I just want to get all the uh, all the players in, in in set so I can talk about them in more in depth later on. You know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then one more quick question about CM Punk: What did you think of that uh, that pop of his return? Some people are saying it's the greatest like pop they heard from the fans from someone returning. What's your thoughts on that one? pretty good pretty good kind of reminds me of a uh, goldberg pop it reminds me of uh, a little bit of how when stone cold returned mm -hmm. that randomly on that one night raw mm -hmm. uh man so yeah man no nah, nah, nah. it's pretty big but then again it was chicago they love him and it's like that he was gonna get that pop regardless it's like that same pop you would have got if 
You remember how ECW came back for that one night mm -hmm. and it was in the in the Hammerstein ballroom and people lost their minds just for that to happen? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that, man. So it was pretty good and I'm glad people are very like open to see him again. Yeah. You know. Pretty and uh I'm just looking forward to what they do with him or what might become of him because like I said, he's a, he seems like he has a really great head on his shoulders and he has a really he's a really good idea guy. So I'm hoping that he can give them better things to do. And then he just seems happy too. He seems like he, that that break from wrestling, um, it it allowed him to appreciate it again, to love the business again. Like he seems like he's pretty happy. Like he's back and he's, you know, I'm pretty sure. Like to me, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be in better shape than when he actually was wrestling full time with the WWE. Because the man went into the MMA. When you do MMA training. Like it gets you to a different type of physical shape. So I'm pretty sure he's going to be, you know, he's going to be ready. He's going to put on the show. And then, you know, the first thing we're going to see is him versus Darby Allen. So we'll be able to judge from there. Um, but I just think they're going to be able to do a lot of things with CM Punk. Like, of course, CM Punk versus Kenny Omega. You know, people, it's just a lot of different stars in there. Like people will probably want to see CM Punk versus Sting. Like it's just, it's so much that they can do with them. So I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Um, and speaking of writing, I, we got to divert to this. Another trending topic. <sighs> Becky Lynch returned. Becky Lynch returned at SummerSlam. It was a big pop. Uh, and Sasha Banks couldn't wrestle. She couldn't wrestle Bianca Belair for the Women's Championship, for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And Becky Lynch was the one that got the opportunity to wrestle Bianca Belair. John, did they mess this up again? Did WWE mess this up again by oh, allowing Becky say. Lynch to squash Bianca Belair? All I'm gonna say is, hey, she got at least a little bit more respect than Kofi Kingston. She didn't just lose the belt on TV like another night. Mm -hmm. At least she lost it on pay per view. I say, I feel like you're throwing away money. You could have had at least gave up a match and try to build, try to make it to where this is what you want to see, but for all we know she's probably still not ready mm -hmm. and that's why they want to protect her that way but it's like come on now man we could have done better than that we could have given us a little bit more than that man it's a damn shame they, know they, <laughs> they knew better than that they knew. <laughs> man I, I was so i was happy to see uh becky lynch out there and then i we when we talked about it i called it i was like i think she's gonna come back even though i thought she was gonna come back to kind of mess up the charlotte match um but uh she came back to to give us almost what we thought was gonna be a phenomenal match we like dang we didn't expect this bianca belair versus becky lynch and maybe you're right maybe becky lynch wasn't ready at the moment but i just think i think they could have done way better than that it's like I get it. It's SummerSlam. You want to bring back some big names. You want to you want the crowd to go crazy, especially CM Punk just came back. You kind of want to do you you're you're in competition even though WWE probably won't say they're in competition, but you're in competition. Um and then you you do that like Bianca Belair has been building up her name. She's been she's been champ since WrestleMania. She's been having putting on great matches and it's like, "Dang, you're just going to have her lose." with I, don't, I never even seen that move by becky lynch and i was like what was that move <laughs> and all of a sudden she just she was done for bianca Belair was just like wwe they did it again they they spoiled a great moment and i'm like i'm a wwe fan but i gotta call it what it is it's the people's podcast they spoiled a great moment and because it it just don't make sense it doesn't this is make how sense. i felt about kofi kingston moving in that manner you could have done way more with less and this is what you do mm -hmm. but see at least what well, at least kofi kingston got got beat down by brock lesnar like i mean it's a little bit more believable like if we if we just look at how they both look and what yeah. brock lesnar is known for not only that brock lesnar has is known for being a beast in the wwe and then he also became UFC heavyweight champion at one point in time. Like, it's a lot more believable. It's like, yeah. but come on now, Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch is smaller than Bianca Belair. Like, yeah, <laughs> it don't even make hey, sense. 
what they to me what they did they just kind of completely just you know ah man it's like there's like a trope they do with a character just to like you know let everybody know that this person is a, like it's a problem they kind of did this with this character with, with, with Bianca Belair they just steamrolled her for the for the sake of like letting everybody know that hey this person is a problem be ready yeah I'm, I'm just like I mean I, I'm a fan of Becky Lynch too that's the man like I'm glad she back but I'm like dang like I just we I don't know I think they could have did something else like my only caveat is what you said is like maybe Becky Lynch just isn't ready but if she's not ready then have her tease the match between her and Bianca Belair like have her come out and be like you know and just kind of like they have a stare down she points at the championship and then she you know she leaves or something like that like and then just tease like we know what's going to come like it's like but having her beat Bianca Belair like that it's like uh, I don't get it it's tragedy it's tragic it's like well I don't get it I don't get it but uh let us move on to just continue to talk about SummerSlam the things that stood out to you uh the most and I could start it off man besides the Bianca Belair the squash I gotta give props dream match we were talking about this last week Edge versus Seth freaking Rollins man that match straight five stars to me that match was fire just like the storytelling the just the like not knowing who was going to win it's like not too it's like you don't get that too many times in the WWE nowadays most of the time we kind of know who's going to win and that match I was like dang I didn't know who was actually going to win I picked Edge but at the same time I didn't I wouldn't have been surprised if Seth Rollins won that especially just the the back and forth the the close calls at pinfall just it just was back and forth the whole entire the whole entire time and then not only that Seth Rollins kind of reminds me of a young Edge just like how their careers is set up um but tell me what your thoughts on that match I think the match was great, but then this is what happens when you got two guys that really know what they're doing in the ring to go out to go at it with each other. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Tyler Black, aka Seth Rollins, is like he was like one of those indie dudes that was killing it, and he's like, and I can see all that experience coming back in and having him have great matches with a guy like Edge, who, the similar manner, you know, went through the indies and then got really good in WWE. To, in development and stuff like that and yeah um only thing i really had to say about this match hey i gotta watch it again that good it is that good it's like come on now let I, I i'm i'm looking forward to smackdown and seeing how they continue that rivalry between edge and seth rollins because i know it's not gonna end there it can't end there people want to see that match again and they want to see how it take it to another level put a little <laughs> stipulation into it and then just keep having them go back and forth until you know until like the until their rivalry is completely over but right now i'm like nah i gotta see more i gotta see one thing more. i gotta say yeah. though is it's like i'm glad they're using they're allowing edge to wrestle other people than randy orton but it's like really that they're uh they're using him in a way that i think is great which is just you know having him do dream matches like this before his time's up you know yeah and, uh, mm-hmm. by the way i was gonna ask you man who do you think what would want to wrestle edge now I mean, there's there's a lot of dream match scenarios still. I mean, you can have Edge. We haven't got Edge versus AJ Styles yet, even though they're on two separate brands. I mean, AJ Styles and AJ Styles is not tag team champion no more. They can switch him back to SmackDown and start. I, I want to see AJ Styles versus Edge, but of course, down the line, like I still want to see more with the Seth Rollins. Um, I would, I could, I mean, Edge versus Roman Reigns again. Like we still. That still hasn't fully, you know, that rivalry hasn't fully come to an end. Like Edge only lost because Seth Rollins uh, interfered. And so it's still that that match still can happen. Um, Edge versus like Kevin Owens, Edge versus Sami Zayn. Like it it, it can go down the line. Like I'm pretty sure all of these matches are going to be like close to five stars. Um, And then even, you know, be interesting, too, is like, what if we got edge in the title picture again with now roman reigns and brock lesnar like you brock lesnar and edge like i don't know i mean i feel like it's 
it's so many different matches you could throw together with Edge, and it's gonna be a great match, most likely. So yeah. I mean, for me though, I would personally, if we can go back in time, at least back in 2018, Tommaso Ciampa versus Edge mm-hmm. in a hardcore match. Mm-hmm. Or just the, or just a table match, yo. That'd be hype. I'd love to see that match, man. Johnny wrestling, Adam Cole, like, <laughs> it's, yeah. Adam Cole. And, but see, that's another thing. There's this rumors that Adam Cole may be going to AEW. <laughs> it's a possibility because you know, as you can see, they kind of broken up the undisputed era and let go of the people that he came in with. And we don't know if he's gonna stick around or not. But hey, man. We still got his Twitch channel, so that's one thing to be grateful for. You man, know? you know, <laughs> you know, what's funny about the WWE to me, like, mm-hmm. man, we we didn't get the undisputed era on the main roster, and before they already broke up the group, I feel like WWE breaks up the groups way too soon now. I feel like they're they kind of go off of like they're trying to get that instant star now, um, more so than back in the past, like. Like with the Nation of Domination, they took time to build up The Rock. Mm-hmm. With even DX, they took time to build up Triple H. Like I feel like, like even with um the Hurt business, they broke up the Hurt business so soon. It's like I get Bobby Lashley is the star of that group, but it's like now we kind of just we lose Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander again to just be nothing <laughs> they just out there just doing nothing again or not even on the show and what hurts me is cedric alexander is a very good wrestler too similar to Shawn benjamin and you know what's crazy i remember uh when they broke up the hurt business dang there every wrestling legend and superstar was like who didn't done that that was a terrible idea and i had to agree but like you said they're obviously searching for gold man and they're just getting copper every time exactly it's like the only one that the WWE hasn't like done that with as a recent i would say is the shield the shield they actually allowed them to build up and then they all became stars so like that i would say they did right by the shield but these recent groups they they're not giving them enough time to to build up like undisputed era i wanted to see them on the main roster um Mm -hmm. but now we may not even get to see adam cole in the WWE if adam cole because we talked about this in past podcasts adam cole to us is a star if he goes to aew i'm telling you that that landscape keeps on shifting a little bit more <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. now people want talking about dream matches with adam cole and cm punk it's like adam cole and kenny omega it's just so many different people so it's just like i don't know WWE got to start they got to start uh thinking about how they build up these young stars because i haven't seen uh recently i checked out this new documentary that's on the wwe network and it talked about how uh rhea ripley how she felt like she was you know great on nxt like they understood her character she felt like she was at her best then she went up to the main roster and i was like dang they actually allowing them to talk like this she basically said she was like then she felt like she lost herself on the main roster and i'm like why does this WWE keep doing this with the main roster? <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't understand what's I, going on. I have a theory, right? That the guys that are watch that are creating and making storylines for the WWE main roster mm-hmm. do not watch um, NXT at all, or if not, don't are they're just oblivious to it, right? Mm-hmm. So when they get these guys, like they, they think they get like a brief like summary of what they are and who what they did and then just kind of throw them out there and see what happens and they're going off of crowd reactions mm-hmm. and just to see how things go it's real um, yeah mm-hmm. it's really disappointing because i seen on this past monday night raw i seen ricochet get thrown out there just to get you know squashed i think but i forgot that the dude name he's he's not the champion of nxt anymore but he was it's like cross or something like that um Cross. Yeah, 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 and he just went out there and just beat down Ricochet, and I was like, "Dang, is this what we have come to?" A Ricochet, Ricochet was a household name on NXT, and he was someone that I thought could be a star on the main roster, and now he's just getting thrown out there to get squashed to build up other NXT superstars. I'm like, "Hey, remember a few years ago they did this to him with Brock Lesnar? <laughs> they fed him to Brock." I'm like, what is they doing? Like, I don't want to go too much into that, but uh, because we still got to talk about John Cena and Roman Reigns. 
What's your thoughts on that match at SummerSlam? My favorite part about that match was it didn't happen on screen, but it happened on Twitter. Mm. Brock Lesnar came back, looked at that corpse I called John Cena, mm. and just repeatedly continued to mess him up. And mm. I kept smiling. I had to put that on replay a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. Should have left it in on TV. Yes. John Cena, man, we need a, we need, we need new, we need something new, man. I understand John Cena's, he's about to take a break again. He's gonna do his movies and stuff. But John, I know this ain't the end. I know this ain't the last time we seeing you. When you come back to the WWE, don't come back with them same jeans, shorts, them same pink, green, orange T-shirts. Switch it up, John. Switch it up. Can we get a heel version of John Cena for the first time? And how long have John Cena's been wrestling? It's been at least 20, maybe, I don't even know. It's been like 15 years. This Man, I wouldn't even mind if he came out as that Suicide Squad character, just came out in that outfit. I'd be like, all right, cool, it's something different. But John, he has to do something, but I understand why, because people, oh, a lot of fans who love that character of John Cena and he loves to be loved, but I'm like, bro, it's time to switch it up, man. These people, this audience is gonna grow up, and you gotta go move on with the times as well, man. It's it's about that time. The thing is, though, I feel like if he turned heel, it will make us appreciate when he eventually becomes babyface again. We'd be like, it's like Roman Reigns. Ro yeah. It's like when people was like sick and tired of like Vince and the writers trying to make us cheer Roman Reigns. It's like they're already born, Roman. Just turn him heel. Why did y'all take so long? Now we're like, this is the best Roman Reigns we have ever seen. It's like when he's heel. And then eventually, if you do turn him back, baby face, I'm pretty sure like we we appreciate it a lot more because we'd be like, dang, like y'all like we actually see how great Roman Reigns is now. Instead of y'all trying to like force us to cheer for mm -hmm. him. So it's the same thing with John Cena. It's like yeah. Oh no! Oh, but John Cena, of course, is like still gonna get cheered, and he's still beloved. But at the same time, you got people that that chance John Cena sucks too. So it's like, uh, I mean, they just gotta switch it up. John, you gotta switch it up. I know you creative. You you can come up with something that can change the rant, wrestling landscape. If you turn heel, if John Cena, imagine John Cena turns heel, and then he forms a group of young upcoming talent. He's gonna. He's going to build up that young talent because then it's John Cena. People are naturally going to see, watch John Cena. He's a, he's a huge name. Turn John Cena heel, it's going to change up a lot of stuff and it'll be good. Like John Cena with a suit on and just being whatever the case may be. He needs to switch it up. He needs to switch it up. Hey yeah, man. Clown idea, but John Cena on, a, on a, new, a reformed, undisputed era. Whatever they need to do. Whatever they need to do. John Cena needs a change. Uh like Roman needed a change. Now Roman's just dominating. Uh, that match was if we talk about the match itself, I thought that match was great too. I thought that was maybe kind of like the second best match of the night, but um I thought that was a phenomenal phenomenal match, but yeah. John, come on now. When you yeah. come back, switch it up. Did anything else stand out to you with SummerSlam? Other than almost in uh, AJ Styles not long, no longer being champion, but then I'm like thinking to myself, man, has Randy Orton really held every belt like three or four times in a row? God dang. But um, I'm looking forward to see what they do with almost. Hopefully this is when he starts to go into singles push. I feel like him, Montez Ford, and um, one of the guys, I forgot to say at the moment, are gonna they can be superstars if they just build them up correctly man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the other thing that was still, that uh, took my attention on um it's like more of like a just a fleeting moment but it was like watching goldberg's son pop up out of nowhere in attack bobby Lashley. i was like thinking to myself i remember when he was like like a kid man because i saw him on a, on this video going over triple h's history in his character, right? Mm -hmm. And he he shows up at the end of the video with Goldberg. He's like a boy. And I'm just thinking to myself, man, he didn't grew up. That's crazy how time flies. And yeah. uh and if you haven't heard of it, man, just check out Max Landis's Triple H video. It's <laughs> but uh that's crazy, man. 
Other than that, though, uh, yeah, it was a throwaway match of Goldberg. But hey, that's what you expect with Goldberg matches, man. I ain't gonna say, I ain't gonna lie. Goldberg's son grew up the fastest. That is the fastest kid that has grown up ever. I was like, I don't, I was like, Goldberg just returned to me. And then that kid, he was like a little baby. I'm like, how the heck did just, where did time go that he looked like he, he had like in high school, like a teenager now, like grown man. I'm like, what the heck? I don't know. But it definitely was satisfying to see uh, Bobby Lashley put the hurt lock on him. <laughs> I was like, man, I ain't going to lie. I'm, I'm loving what Bobby Lashley MVP is doing. They deserve to still be in the spotlight. Bobby Lashley deserves to be the WWE champion right now. So I'm like... Hey, I'm just trying to see what they're going to do next with Bobby Lashley. I love, and I told you, man, I said they're going to figure out a way to either have Bobby Lashley win this match, but not like by pinfall. And they just had Bobby Lashley just beat down Brock. I mean, beat down Goldberg, take out his legs. They just had him dominate him now. So in the future, Goldberg can still come back and be like, I didn't actually lose. I didn't get pinned. And then yeah. Goldberg, and eventually Goldberg probably can challenge Bobby Lashley again and be like, you know, I hate you, you know, or whatever the case may be. Look what you did you know to what my I son. See though, right? Here's the st- here's how it goes up, right? Go, I mean, not go. What's it called? Roman Reigns versus uh, Brock Lesnar happens, and Bobby Lashley interferes and costs Brock Lesnar the match. Mm-hmm. And then here's what happens, right? So Brock gets into a rivalry with. Bobby and Goldberg appears to spear uh, Bobby Lashley. Mm. And yes. then you could possibly have a triple threat match between the Bobby Lashley, Goldberg, and Brock Lesnar. And you know what's actually interesting about that? That's a fire idea, but that also helps out Goldberg. Because let's say, I think Goldberg's probably best fit for a triple threat match or something where. It's not a one-on-one where he has to do a lot of moves or try to figure it out because we know what what's going to happen with that. It's going to be a short match. But if you now put Bobby and Brock in there, Bobby and Brock can be like, they can keep the pace of the match. And Goldberg here and there can have a big spot where he spears somebody through the barricade or he does something big. But then for the rest of the match, he's kind of like he gets, you know, he gets suplexed and then or gets thrown out of the ring and he kind of just survives time. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. now, but then when it's just one on one, it seems like Goldberg is like it, at, at this age right now, it doesn't seem like he can carry a one on one match. I'm not sure if he was even back in the day, he was really carrying a one on one match. So I'm like right now for sure, a triple threat match. with, And then we know Bobby and Brock can carry a one on one match. That actually may work even way better for just not only uh, like star power, but also for in ring, like for even yeah. Goldberg. Yeah. See, WWE got hire man. <laughs> yeah. So they need to put that together. I wouldn't be surprised though. That would be pretty dope. Like a Goldberg, Bobby, and, and Brock. That would be pretty dope. I'll be interested in seeing what they may do that for WrestleMania. You may have yeah. just called their WrestleMania match. You may hey, have just did that. it. We'll find out. <laughs> we may. Oh, and, and then we still got to see what, what happens with Roman as time yeah. goes on. But um, yeah, that, that may be pretty dope, though. Um, the only thing I'm trying to think of anything else that stood out to me with SummerSlam um, was that the Usos, they had a good match with Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. That was a pretty good match. The Usos pulled it out. Um, other than that, I think. I mean, Charlotte Flair is like the 12th time, 12 time champion already. So I'm like, she's back champion. I didn't think that was going to happen. Yeah. But then again, uh, we all knew that uh, Super Nikki wasn't going to last long. They, they, why did they even have her win the money in the bank? Just to. <laughs> I would have loved for this to happen in Hurricane been in her corner the entire time. Man. Instead, we just another missed opportunity. God dang it! They, we know Hurricane will show up. We know he will. Man, they could have had a bait. I hate when they. I don't like when WWE gets rid of the Money in the Bank contract that quick. Like, I, I like when the wrestler keeps it for a long time and then cashes it when we least suspect it. And then like, like the best cash in probably to me was Seth Rollins at WrestleMania when he cashed in on Roman and Brock. 
and at he, WrestleMania. Yeah, at WrestleMania. And that was at that WrestleMania actually. That was a, that was in uh, the new 49ers stadium. So, and that was just it was amazing because Seth Rollins was the money in the, he had the contract for so long, and that we didn't expect him to cash it in at WrestleMania, and then he did. He cashed it in and made it a triple threat match, and he won the belt. It's like they had what's her name is it nikki is it nikki she they, they had her win and then she wins the belt and then now she loses it that quick and it's like well that now that kind of reminds me of it kind of reminds me of uh when uh when stone cold didn't quite want to lose to triple h and he gave it to mick foley just so he can get the belt off of me oh yeah yeah and he was champion for a short amount of time too yeah. WWE has a way of doing this now. I'm starting to see it's kind of coming coming full circle. But let us move on to your uh, segment where you highlight past wrestling. So you can go ahead and introduce that to the people. All right. So this segment is pretty much I'm going to go back in time and just, you know, talk about some past wrestling matches or past wrestlers that I think are deemed like they need the spotlight on it due to the fact, you know, they, it's, it's because we don't want things to get lost to the annals of time. That's just how it is. So we're going to pick up something that's a little bit more recent. And this wrestler's name is Moose. He's a very big man, very strong man. And on top of that, I think he would have had a bright future, but unfortunately, you know, he has some issues with his past that, you know, he has to overcome. But in this path of overcoming his past, he is one of TNA's bright spots and made me watch TNA in almost over 10 years. And on top of that, TNA is not even on like a regular channel. They're on a weird network, but that's besides the point. It, Moose is the unofficial TV champion of TNA. And what he does is he goes around with a belt that he's not really the champion for and just and getting challenging and, and accepting challenges from people across the, uh, the roster. And he puts on very good matches back to back to back. And it's like, oh my God. They need to make this man champion, but it's like understandable that they why they don't do it. But it's like this is pretty much like you ha- if you want to check out TNA, you want to see a wrestler, a big man wrestler, put on a good match. TNA is the place right here with Moose. And then another thing I want to touch on since we're still on TNA is: Do you remember the time Sting was the Joker? Oh man, I I don't actually, I actually don't. Yeah, so a hot minute Sting was going through a Joker phase because you know Mark Hamill's not Mark Hamill, excuse me, the the Dark Knight movie dropped, mm-hmm. and um, Heath Leather's Joker was popular, and Sting kind of had a transformation in the bed, and bro, him and Kurt Angle have some dope matches that you gotta check out, mm-hmm. and on TNA, and this is like I was like, this is like to me is like what I've been missing out on on TNA because. Even though only WWE was popping off, TNA were having classics in the background and they were having Kurt Angle, Sting, and AJ Styles go at it, man. Mm -hmm. And if you want to see like a good run of like a crazy character, you want to watch Sting, I mean, Joker Sting, the crazy icon, go up against guys like Mr. Kennedy, Kurt Angle, and I think not Ho Hogan. He went up against one other guy that was really dope. But back in that era, man, you got to check it out, man. And he was doing a lot of crazy stuff. Like he was just showing up on people's like, you know, trailers. He was just showing up in random spots and just giving people the business, man. This was a cool run to watch. The crazy part is he was 50 around this time as well, man. And he's still back. And he back again on AEW now. I gotta check it out. I gotta learn more about that sting on TNA. Yeah, Joker Sting. And um one more match though, you probably will need to check out because this is gonna involve somebody else later on. Is uh this match is legendary, which is Rey Mysterio mm-hmm. versus Eddie Guerrero mm-hmm. back in WCW. This match is is like the best way I can put it. This is wrestling lore history right there in the making. And this is like pretty much like they gave these two like a spot to do on a, in a pay-per-view match. And, and they also built up a rivalry for it. And it's all based around getting that mask off of Rey Mysterio. Mm-hmm. It's one of the best matches you can watch on pretty much on um, pretty much on pay-per-view, man. It's like if there's anything like a perfect match, this is one of those perfect matches, man. 
I for sure would check it out. I know Ed, I know Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio. They got a lot of classic match, um, classic matches, and even in WCW. So that's another one I gotta, I gotta rewind and uh, check it out. Mm-hmm. And I think what's crazy about this match, this is like back in the '90s where people weren't too hip on luchadors and that style of wrestling, but the fans ate that up, man. And I don't want to spoil this match, but this is one of those matches you gotta see uh, if you have. Man, on if you have the Peach Street Network, or if not, if you can find it on YouTube, go for it, man. It's one of those must-see matches. Okay, cool, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, before we continue on, we just gotta take one quick break, and then when we come back from the break, we're still. Um, I'm pretty sure you still got a couple more highlights you want to go through, right? No, I think that'll wrap it up. That'll wrap it up. Okay, then when we come back from the break, we're gonna do defend this wrestler, and then we're gonna have the better team debate the Shield or Edge and Christian. But let us take a quick break. And we're back from the break. And we're gonna go to one of you guys' or all of you guys' favorite segment of the show. I know y'all gonna love this segment. Well, some people gonna love it, some people gonna hate it. It is what it is, but this is Defend This Wrestler. And John has a new person that I have to defend. So go ahead, I'm gonna pass the reins on to John. Well, I'm not going to be as visceral as I was last week because I actually do like this wrestler, a.k.a. Chavo Guerrero. But I need you to defend this wrestler, Mitch, because, man, Chavo, I can't I can't ever justify having this man around ever. And then on top of that, when he is around, all he does is bring up Eddie. We love Eddie. We understand that was your world. But, man. He brings up he brings him up and rides that kind of boat the entire time, and then when he's in the ring, it ain't nothing special. From Lucha Underground to TNA to back when he was on WWE, it was just nothing about like why do we give you a paycheck? Why? And I need you to justify this man. I need you to justify giving putting this man on the roster after after WCW. You have to. I think isn't Chavo Guerrero on AEW right now? I think he just returned or something like that. I think he's on AEW, but um, yeah, and Vicky. And Vicky. oh, and Vicky. Yeah, you didn't know. I didn't know Vicky was there. I knew Chavo. I, I couldn't. I can't remember what video I was watching, but I knew it was like a big return or a semi big return, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> that Chavo girl returned to some wrestling promotion. I think it was AEW, and uh, but. Um, and of course now it is it's confirming that it is AEW but that's what I was thinking when I was looking I was like what Chavo's back but ah, okay here we go Chavo Guerrero so to me I think the interesting thing for me Chavo Guerrero had he had a good point in his career where he was like and I'm talking about his solo career because if we talk about his tag team career of course it was great him and Eddie Guerrero like coming together being smackdown tag champions for a good amount of time um throughout the 2000s just giving us great matches giving us great content great storylines los guerreros to me at one point in time they were like my favorite tag team i'm not gonna lie um but i i I do have to say this eddie girl has always been the one that stood out to me it's kind of like with Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy. Jeff Hardy has always been the guy that stood out to me and the rest of the world. Edge and Christian. Edge has always been the guy that stood out in that group. So once again, Eddie Guerrero is definitely the guy that stand out over Chavo. But we do got to bring up Chavo's cruiserweight career as well. Chavo Guerrero's had had, he's had the cruiserweight championship during a time where not this era of cruiserweight champions where the cruiserweight championship actually seemed like it did matter somewhat we had Rey Mysterio competing for with the cruiserweight title we had Chavo Guerrero we had multiple different uh wrestlers and it was just I remember I remember that era I remember Chavo Guerrero being a pretty good wrestler as well he's he's good in the ring but at the same time he doesn't fully stand out and I do gotta it's uh, it's kind of tough to try to defend Chavo because it's like when I think of Chavo Guerrero I think his best moments is with Eddie Guerrero so and it was great moments doesn't mean that Chavo Guerrero is not a Hall of Famer to me Chavo Guerrero is a Hall of Famer but I just 
he hasn't had that solo uh moment yet he hasn't had that solo career yet where he just stands out on his own like christian he has had that solo run um matt hardy's even had you know you know that solo run to an extent um no no matt hardy definitely has that that had that solo run when i think about even in tna matt hardy has had that solo run um chavo i don't think he's ever had that solo run and it may it may be a little too late there's only one instance i remember of chavo chavo grown solo that just speaks out of my mind was when he was kerwin white and he had the ascot on and he was driving like i think a long i forgot what he was driving but they had him looking like uh, they had him looking like Carlton for the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Man, it was a tragic situation going on. <laughs> That's what I remember a solo Chavo. Man, it's, I'm like they got to do something. Then when he went to TNA, it was just like, oh man, it wasn't memorable in the way I would have liked it to be. I and then when he got the Lucha Underground, at least you can see him being the old man kind of guy that was mentoring i feel like chavo needs one more run where he like if he's to retire if he's to have a retirement match a wrestlemania type match it needs to be against Rey mysterio we need one more Rey mysterio versus chavo Guerrero match or something like he has to have one big moment because like right now we don't we like chavo we think of chavo when we think of chavo we think of like his time with him and eddie but yeah outside of that i don't i don't think of chavo Guerrero like on his own i don't mean i'm just like he it doesn't mean that he's not a hall of famer but it's like he hasn't had that solo run and then the question comes in can he actually be impressive or stand out if he was to have that solo run i'm not sure yeah. what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go look up some old school uh mexico footage or the indies pretty much around that time i want to see how he did there because maybe for all we know Chavo was the star and Eddie was the background guy. He was the one living in the shadow. But like I said, man, you gotta let me know how you can get how you can help this guy out, man. Cause Chavo to me, man, I love you, but god dang it, man. There needs to be something more to you. He needs so, one more match. If he's to have one if he's to have that solo, that solo uh, you know, standout moment. He has to come back to the WWE and he has to, it has to be revolved around Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio, Rey's son. So something that's going to stand out where he gives us like, man, he gave us a WrestleMania moment that yeah. didn't have anything to do with Eddie Guerrero. Or, um, yeah. With, uh, if AEW can do this, they can set up a match with him and uh, Andrade. Because if I'm not mistaken, Eddie Guerrero and Andrade are both wrestling royalty, and they can have like a really good, they can have a really good storyline about wrestling royalty and just having a big finale to uh, a career for Chavo Guerrero. Yeah, somebody oh. let us mm -hmm. know. Let us know your thoughts on everybody's watching. All the people, let us know what your thoughts is on Chavo Guerrero. How can he have that solo moment, or has his time passed by? we all love chavo Guerrero. come on now we can't hate chavo but oh he he hasn't had that solo moment so all his all my memories of chavo has to do with eddie Guerrero. it is what it is <laughs> or ray mysterio yeah yeah so i mean it's hard to defend chavo in this regard but i feel like chavo is still a hall of famer but you know he just hasn't had that moment didn't chavo go through like a run where he was wrestling christian or something like that uh, i think that was during the time i was really wasn't paying attention to the wwe like that i think christian was like the heavyweight champion or something or ecw champion and then chavo was having trying to go after it I, it was something that just kind of went over my head i'm not gonna lie <laughs> what i remember from specifically was uh was a moment where it was like Chavo was a cruiserweight champion. He was, was just, he was knocking people out left and right. And it was just like a real problem. And I believe that streak was ended by Gregory Helms, AKA Hurricane later on, mm. which is like, that's another thing I got to highlight when, when Hurricane dropped the mask and he was just himself. Mm. That was a really good run. But, uh, but we're talking about Chavo and I feel like, yeah, man, Chavo just, like you said, man, he needs one more good run and have it like be a spectacle. Make it 
And if if it has meaning and weight, I guarantee you, man, it would be classic. One hundred percent. Yeah, I feel like that's the only way he can do that is if he come back to the WWE and it revolves around Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. It's a storyline that we all that's been surrounded by around Chavo's career, and it would be it would be a great send off for Chavo if it was against Rey or even Rey's son Dominic, or something that got to do with them and. It would be a great send off for Chavo and then Chavo can be a Hall of Famer. Uh, so shout out to Chavo Guerrero. You are on Defend This Wrestler this week, but we still pay you much respects. You're still a legend. You're still a Hall of Famer. Um, but also the people that's watching us, let us know what Chavo must do to have that uh, that spectacular, you know, solo moment or has his time passed him by. Oh, yeah. By the way, you know who's next week's wrestler, right? Who? Goldberg. Oh, you want to bring bring go yeah bring Goldberg yes. back because I can defend Goldberg. Bring that bald glistening piece of trash in here just so we can understand how you defend this man because you can't. Doom doom. When I love when they knock on that door and the Goldberg bust the door open. Remember when he bust the door open with his head and he had cut his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Am I defending Goldberg? Oh, I love oh. Goldberg, man. That's going to be a good one next week. So tune in to that. We got Defend This Wrestle. We got Goldberg on the segment with that one. We got, I got to defend him. Go and Just let me point this out. Goldberg, Stone Cold and Goldberg were my two favorite wrestlers growing up. So I'm going to be able to defend Goldberg a lot better than defending maybe like a Baron Corbin or uh, even Chavo. Even though I love Chavo, but... I was a fan of Goldberg. Come on, man. I, was I a don't fan. see how you like this man. He's so intensity, at his intensity, finest. and just being garbage. It's like you watch him hulk himself up just for him to hurt himself five seconds later, <laughs> or injure your favorite wrestler's career. Oh, like, man. come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. But let us move on to the last segment. Who's the better team? Who had the better career? Edge and Christian or the Shield? Shield? I can already tell you that. It's the Shield. The Shield? Yes. Because at least I can tell you this. Edge and Christian, right? That was a team that WWE did not know what to do with. And it kind of shows even through the hiring. They didn't hire Edge and Christian at the same time. They hired Edge, then Christian a little bit later. And then it shows that they were scared to let them do anything. And then, well, that's why they had them hanging around Gangrel and barely saying anything. But once they gave Edge a mic and they finally let him do be him, it, they finally took off, but it was still slow. They didn't want to, it was like they didn't feel like they were superstar material. And it's crazy how if you look at Edge as he split apart from Christian, they it took them dang near like eight years. He had title matches against Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle and stuff like that until finally they let him shine with John. but it was like bro they don't they didn't feel like neither of these dudes could succeed so that's why their careers when they're a tag team didn't look so bright meanwhile with the shield right they were tag team champions they were obviously guys that can they were making a point that when you see these dudes they were a problem you know what's crazy though? They have the same entrance for a hot second. Coming through the crowd, then going into wrestling. Mm -hmm. That's hot. I like that. But um, but then you look at the shield. These are three guys that they were willing to let them go out there and take a risk on. And that's why you see them have so many great moments. That's why I feel like when it comes to the shield, they were very, very, very careful about what they did with them. At the same time, though, they built them up perfectly. Mm -hmm. And they're from their rivalries to their breakup every moment of it was something spectacular to watch while if you look at edge and christian they just didn't they gave them scraps and they had to work with it and they kind of popped off in a lot of areas man they really did especially with the tag team matches at wrestlemania especially with their their climactic end on i think on raw mm -hmm. no i think it was it was yeah they were on raw at the time and then and and then seeing how they went in two different paths was cool because you know Christian had a better career in TNA than he did in the WWE and if you look at how and if you look at how they uh they treated the, the shield all of them went to go do great things and still are doing great things you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah 
and that's why I say like the Shield is a better crew because the WWE set them up to be better as a tag team. Let me let me get in here with this. All I gotta say is this right here. I am an Attitude Era fan, and let me just I I got a I got a surprise for you. This all I gotta do is play this song right here, and this gives you my answer right here. Come on now, let me play this. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? No. That's I can't all. Hear. Oh, you can't hear that? No. Ah, uh, you can't hear the theme song? I'm playing the theme song of the brood. All I got to tell you is Edge and Christian. Come on now, John. That's all I got. That's all I got is Edge and Christian. I can't believe you can't even hear that. But it don't matter. You will see it later on. At the end of the day, it's Edge and Christian. Just the theme song alone is already over the shield. Come on now. The shield going through the crowd. The brood was coming out of fire. Come on now, the, the the lights turn down red, and then Edge goes on to have the solo career he has. Christian is now, what is he, the Impact Champion on AEW, and then Christian Hassel had a solo career, unlike um, Chavo Guerrero. Sorry, Chavo, I love you, Chavo. But at the end of the day, Edge and Christian are the ones. They come on, they took tag team wrestling on ladder matches and took it to a whole nother level. The rivalries with the Dudley boys, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy, giving us classic matches time and time again. The Shield, as a group, have they given us classic matches like that? No, they have not. Edge and Christian are bona fide Hall of Famers. As a matter of fact, I would love to see them to do it again as tag team at their age right now, even though we don't probably won't be able to see it because they're on two separate promotions. But Edge and Christian all day, baby. Come on now. I know people rocking with Edge and Christian. All I got to do is play that Brood song one more time. This man. <laughs> Leave me in the dark over here with no audio. God uh, damn. Oh, man. I thought you was going to be able to hear that, but it is what it is. Matter of fact, you know what? I'm going I'm to I'm give you some justice right here. I'm going I'm to play it like this for you. I'm going to play it like this. I got this. YouTube right here, man. I'm going to play it like this. You can hear it like that now. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> Wait till that beat drop. Wait, wait. You gotta wait till the beat drop. Come on now, John. You ain't ready. You is not ready. Come on now. Edge and oh Christian. That theme song is just on a whole nother level. They end it right there. They win it right there just off the theme song alone. Come on now. I will say this. Because of Roman, the, the Shield theme song is played out. It is. Man. It is one of those things I wish was that was forgotten in time. God dang. But I'm going but I do pay respect to the shield. The shield is amazing. I love Seth Rollins. I love Roman Reigns. I love Dean Ambrose. Dean needs to come back to the WWE. Um, but that being said, he's had a good run too at AEW. So um, you know, I'm a fan of the shield, but they just yeah. come on, Edge and Christian. Nah, they not. I'm not giving them that. Wow. Wow. I'm not giving them that. Let me know, people. Let us know in the comment section. Let us know who y- who y'all got. The Shield or y'all got Edge and Christian. Y'all know how I feel. When that Brood song come on, it's over. Edge just brought that back, too, for SummerSlam. Man, he had me hyped when he brought that back. Come on, Edge is just on a different level. Come on now. Yeah. Edge is better than any, any Seth Rollins. Ooh, Roman, that's a tough one. But I'll still take Edge over Roman Reigns. And, of course, I'll take Edge over Dean Ambrose. Edge alone. Now, if we're talking about Christian, and, uh, you know, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> like I said, the, the WWE set Christian up for failure, man. But when he wrestled in TNA, yo, he was the man. He was the man. But, and uh, hopefully he can continue to be the man. Go ahead. But I was going to say, let us know who y'all thoughts are. Do you got anything you want to say about the event? Any more else you want to add in to try to push the shield over? Hey man, they have way better rivalries with uh with with Triple H Definitely than that sure. clean on that what was that rivalry? What they had a three way rivalry with the Dudley boys? Mm. And it's like Oh man, it was the best way I can describe it, if you weren't watching the matches and you just paying attention between the rivalries, it was pretty it was pretty lackluster. But the matches though, one hundred percent. The matches carried those them carry carried them they took ladder matches to a whole nother level that's why we even yeah. have like a money in the bank 
you know, shout out to Chris Jericho, but we got a money in the bank because, you know, of course, Shawn Michaels and all of them. But who took it to another level? It was Edge and Christian with the Hardys, with the Dudleys. Now we look at ladder matches a whole different way. Like a tag team ladder match, they got to live up to the hype that Edge and Christian, Matt Hardy and the Dudley boys set. So now Edge and Christian and then they they I don't even know how many times they won the tag titles. I'm pretty sure they they're on the top of the list as being uh, holding the championship belts a lot of times as well. Come on now, Edge and Christian and then diverting to their own solo career. They're on a whole nother level to me. Attitude era is always gonna beat this era for me. I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> we got we, we gotta do somebody else from the attitude era and somebody else from this era. And I think we're gonna we gonna always have some people debating in the comment section. We can we can talk about it because I was gonna say, you know, in my opinion, we could have done like, you know, Kurt Angle, right? Mm-hmm. Going up against somebody like a Mr. Perfect or something like that, or uh or uh let's see here another like a grand example would be two wrestlers i would love to compare bret hart to be a, you want to do bret hart again but again who and kurt angle that's kind of unfair because bret is so good and he can have a good a match with anybody it's like it's never a match of like kurt you saying kurt kurt can do it too kurt i don't know do I, I, I need time but, to think about it but Kurt can do it too. I'm just saying, Brett is the way better wrestler, though. Mm. But Kurt, no disrespect, is he's not like in in a wrestling like you know, uh, entertainment aspect. Kurt is not as good as as a uh, Brett, but Kurt's style and his his overall raw energy and intensity is is immaculate. But. It's like a grand example would be like you ever seen Bret Hart versus Kevin Nash on a uh, WWE back nah, in the day? No, nah, I haven't. No. So you, check this match out, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken, this is a Survivor Series, but if you know somebody's gonna probably correct me, but what's it called? Bret Hart went up against Kevin Nash, and Kevin Nash is kind of like a weird guy to have matches with because he's kind of he's kind of like he is kind of like the tall giant you got to work with, and he had a whole match going breaking it down from going after his legs tie him up with a to ring post just pretty much handicapping kevin nash this entire time and making and making one of kevin nash's best match on the spot like that mm-hmm. it's one of those like matches you gotta see if you want to see great kevin nash matches i will check it out so let's do that debate thing Bret hart and kurt angle yeah. Bret hart and kurt angle for next week but uh you got any words you want to leave with the people before we get on out of here so my ending words I have for the people is this, man. If you got a goal or if you got something you want to bring in reality, do not be afraid to go in there and chase it. Because I guarantee you somebody's going to be willing and interested to help you out and make these dreams become reality. We live in an era where things like AEW can exist because people have, want to see a similar vision. And that vision can become can come true for you too, man. So if you got a dream or you got like something you want to make happen, go out there and go do it oh man that's actually very inspirational and that 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 dream for me y'all i will be a wrestler now i don't know if i'm gonna make it as far as the wwe i may just make it into aew and i wouldn't be mind that but uh i do got a dream to be a wrestler now how that goes down i'll tell i'll keep y'all updated my first training will be september 8th september 8th that'll be my first debut into training um and you know so we'll see how that goes and i'm gonna keep you guys updated but i'm a man that is into doing so many different stuff so it's like i can't just say wrestling is the one dream i got man come on we I, you know i do so much different stuff so but uh if i'm gonna leave some words with the people i'm gonna say that was great from john listen to that inspiration uh go after what you're you know you're trying to pursue uh don't let people don't let the the lows or the downs knock you out because they will come there's going to be times where you're going to feel like you want to quit there's going to be times where you feel like you're unappreciated there's going to be times where you're going to feel like man i'm chasing this dream but it's not going to actually i'm not going to make it 
you got to actually push through those moments. Those moments of adversity is going to be the moments that help you actually become even stronger to be able to chase after those dreams or to reach those dreams. Actually, um, you got to you got to trust the process. You got to you got to also love the process as well. Most people nowadays, they're like more instant gratification. They want it now. You got to love the process. You got to love going through the process to try to make it to whatever your dream is and if you love that if you love the grind then i don't think anything's going to be able to stop you but uh this is what we're just gonna say i don't know i don't know really the only thing i gotta say is like man trust the process we saw how that turned out yeah trust the process um uh, we're not talking about Ben Simmons, though. We're not talking about. We may have to have defend this player with Ben Simmons. <laughs> 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 we may need to put Ben Simmons on here. We'd be like, this is a wrestling park. Nah, we gotta have Ben Simmons. You, you, you gotta be on defend this defend this player. Or something about to happen because we don't know what's going down. But uh, th- but it, I just want to point this out. This is the People's Podcast is presented by the Wrestling Republic. For any more wrestling news, you can go ahead and check out the Wrestling Republic. Uh, for rumors, debates, and opinions, make sure to check out WrestlingRepublic.com along with at Wrestling Republic on Instagram or all social media. Check out the YouTube channel and uh, keep checking out the People's Podcast with Meech and John. We're going to continue to give you some great content. Um, and also eventually we're going to start doing interviews. So any of y'all that want to, I know it's a lot of wrestling fans that watches this right now. So yeah, if y'all want to try to come on and debate us, come on, bring it. We, we ain't scared. We is not scared. So you can go ahead and bring it on. But, um, this is the people's podcast and, uh, you know, we're going to keep on bringing some great content to you guys. And we out.